the Iran, Iran to Mohammed, the preacher of freedom, justice, and equality, toward American so-called Negroes. The lost and found members of the Asia Arab Black Nation and from the tribe of Shabazz. People and of the earth and of the heavens said that this man went into the Africa as it is known today in what they call at that time the jungles of East Asia and began a tribe from himself because of, of the other scientists rejecting his idea. And the idea I will not make known on there. But it is known what his idea really was. And we are the people that he produced. And that was 50,000 years ago, according to the word of Almighty God, Allah, to me. There is also, according to the Holy Quran, and even according to his own saints, a cycle of 50,000 years, that once every 50,000 years, there uh, comes a major change in our civilization. I say our civilization because that we had no other civilization on the planet Earth according to the word of Almighty God Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and the year 1930. Yeah, I did not get acquainted with him until 1931. And since 1931, after his mission, of me, I have been busy on this particular work of trying to resurrect my people into the knowledge of the present of Almighty God, whom the world has been looking for to come for the past 2,000 years. He is referred to in the 22nd century of the Quran as uh, the Great Midi. Uh, Midi means one, according, according to the Quran, uh, a self-independent person, a guide that comes to guide others, uh, while he himself is self-guided. This is God in person. So it was in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, he was himself as being self-independent, and that he came for our salvation to put us on the right path that we may be successful. Referring to uh, my people and myself, the so-called American Negro. This particular tribe of Shabazz, a great uh, people, uh, they were 50,000 years ago in their father and other tribes of families has been produced since that time and has spread out over the earth. Don't get me wrong now, don't make a mistake in thinking that I'm telling you this was the beginning of uh, the man on the earth. 50,000 years ago is like telling uh, you 30 days ago or 10 days ago or 5 days ago to the age of the universe. We have no exact record of it, but it runs way into the trillions. Uh, he taken me back into uh, around 76 trillion years of the universe. But <clears throat> I'm not saying that we are talking in that particular history uh, this hour. We are talking in the history of the past 6,000 years and 50,000 years ago. We don't care to pick up any further back. It is not absolutely necessary to do so. As uh, you are in the number six, and number six we will deal with, and not with 66, and 
than 76 trillions of years. And now when we go further into 50,000 years, only just to tell you that this is the beginning of our particular uh, father preparing us in that particular uh, area of continent they call Africa, where we begin about 50,000 years ago, was called the jungles of East Asia. We are very <coughs> lightly taught concerning the black man beyond the uh, uh, 6,000 years ago. The black man here in America have not known uh, anything about his history beyond 4, 400 years ago, pardon me. And 400 years ago, he was brought here by the white man. And uh, the white man deprived him of any knowledge beyond that particular time. He did not teach our people anything about their previous history, even about uh, what we were in the 7, 8, 9, and 10, and 11th century. He didn't teach us that. Because that those slave masters were absolutely 100% together on depriving the slave of any greatness of his history. So therefore he leads the left off from me. All of his history up until his entrance into slavery. And that uh, history we have that today, from uh, the beginning of our fathers being put into slavery, and there they suffered 300 long years under the uh, hard taskmasters, murders, rangers, and burners of our people's lives and flesh. This happened <coughs> Uh, just 400 years ago, as I say, according to the history of our God, that they were brought in here around 15 and 55. And if we subtract 15 and 55 from 1962, we have about uh, 407 years now. And uh, if we were brought here in the world, according to the Word of God, who is the best knower, who keeps a record of all men and all the actions of man, <clears throat> Then today we have stayed in the Western Hemisphere 400 and seven years to be exact. <clears throat> and with not a true knowledge of what went on in those 407 years. Because we take for our knowledge of that time what the white slave masters wrote. If they were good at trying to hide uh, truth as they are today, we can't tell whether we have a true history of ourselves or not. But we have to take what they say. But anyway, we were um, put into to slavery, and we served something like around 300 and ten years into service to slavery. I don't know where these fellows get this stuff about uh, about 246 years uh, over here. I don't know where to get that from. But uh, uh, I'm with God and the scientist who gives us around 400 years here in slavery or more. Because of the actions or edicts that is now taking place, which uh, corresponds with the prophecy of Abraham. 
that we will sojourn into a, a strange land that is not ours, and will serve a strange people for four hundred. And after that time, the Lord God will uh, judge that nation and bring again the seed, as it is called in the Bible, but just say the people of Abraham, again into their own land, and will uh, give to them uh, that land, and put them over the whole entire earth according to the Bible. In the words that look east, west, north, and south, as far as you can see, this will be there. Uh, look at this there, canopy, and if you can number the stars there, then you can number the lost and found uh, people of God. <coughs> On people that will return to this land, and that they will be multiplied without numbers. And that if you go to the seashore and count this grains of sand on the seashore, you will get something like near knowledge of what the population of that lost and found people of yours that I shall go after and bring again after they have served 400 years. Serving a stranger, and uh, they will not have any justice in that land. The people will make a uh, slave out of them. They will be ill-treated for the whole 400 years. And I will go and judge that people, or I, in words to say, I will <laughs> avenge uh, them of that people. And I will bring them again and track them here in this land. This is very good to understand and to know, especially my people here in America. We are saying today that uh, we are talking on the history of the black men in America as given by Almighty God, Allah, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. It is up to you that is listening to judge whether or not that this <coughs> Christ bond with the knowledge of the history that you have, and with the prophesy of the scripture. You must forget about Israel, the, uh, uh, the uh, people that the Bible are referring to. By no means could this be uh, the people of Abraham. Israel is not the people of Abraham. Israel was not a Jew. Israel was not a Christian. Is uh, uh, Abraham, pardon me, Abraham was not a Jew, not a Christian. And the Holy One teaches us that, and if you study Abraham's history, you can easily see that and understand that he was not a Jew, nor uh, was he a Christian, because Christianity had not been uh, organized in Abraham's time. Christianity was just organized after the death of Jesus. Therefore, Abraham living even before Moses, then uh, it could not uh, be his religion, Christianity. Nor could he be a Jew when there was no Jews uh, in Abraham's time. There were white people, but there were no Jews. The whole entire race of white people were confined to what is known today as Europe. Europe. They were there in the hills and cave sites of Europe, not making any history for themselves until the birth of Moses. Uh, the white race history begins with Moses. They count, uh, they record their history from his time. They have very scant knowledge of anything like a history of their own before the birth of Moses. And that is through what Moses taught them and what other scientists who knew the history of the white man has taught them. We today in America uh, should be happy to know that God has visited us to 
reveals us the knowledge of the history of the people of Earth today. We have it, and it's clear as a crystal if you understand. But you don't understand, therefore he has chose me and has given to me the understanding to give it to you, my beloved people. And you really need it, and it's your salvation, and I hope that you will benefit from it and will gladly lift up your hand and voice and praise to Allah for giving to us the truth today and get away from that slavery, worshiping of devils that you are now doing. Without knowledge, you are absolutely worshiping devil and don't know it. But this knowledge has come to you that you may direct your face as the Holy One teaches us <coughs> and the thirties and thirties to <coughs> set your face up right for a religion in the right state. A religion. And by nature, which were, uh, which is to say, a religion that by nature you were created in. It is not a religion in which that you cannot uh, obey or cannot believe and practice. It's a religion according to the very nature in which you were born in. And it is no hard uh, way of trying to obey and carry into practice the principles of this religion. It's easy. You don't go through a lot of rituals uh, to get into Islam. In fact, about it, uh, uh, the original people of America, the black men, it, it is so easy to tell them the five principles of this religion and do them or practice them that he all uh, most will think that you have not taught him enough and he will be asking you for more understanding of this love. But it's very easy. Just believe in Almighty God Allah and believe in his prophets, believe in the scriptures that they brought, and believe in the resurrection and the judgment of the world. It's easy to believe. It's easy to understand. You ought to know what is for the believer to practice. There is much that he should practice, but here is true that is always mentioned. That is the keeping up of prayer and the pain of the poor age, which means giving charity to the truth of this religion and to your fellow man. This is very easy to understand. Now, we go back again to our history. Let us the history. Because it is the thing that we should know. History makes man. Without the knowledge of history, how can we prepare a future for ourselves? Without the knowledge of history, how can we tell where we stand at present? History makes us. True history is our guide. We must know what was before we can know what is and what is yet to come. This Almighty God, whose proper name is Allah, came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, we can gladly give praise forever and teach that praise of this glorious one to our children, that they may teach it to their children and their children's children throughout the unending years to come. For this great truth, for this glory that he has shed upon you and I, for this salvation that he has brought to you and I who were under the shackles of slavery and living in the house of bondage and serving uh, a people that had to know love for our fathers that actually killed them for the fun of it and waked them to death for the fun of it. Actually mocked them, taught them in a way so that they would be a mockery for their civilization and for all civilized people of the earth. This is the trains of the so-called Negro 
under slavery or in the house of bondage. So this is a salvation to you and I. You and I should be happy and should not be ashamed as so many of you who have such have little knowledge of actually the presence of God among you and the wisdom that he is given to you that you feel ashamed to even confess his name as it is written. You feel ashamed even to uh, say that you belong to the Islamic world, which means a nation of entire submiss uh, submission to the will of God. You are ashamed to even say that you are a Muslim, which means a righteous person. Muslim is uh, something that you should be glad to represent yourself as being a Muslim. But you are ashamed because the devil has made you like that. To not to confess that you are a follower of the God of truth and justice. You are not to say that you are a Muslim. You are not to say that you believe in Islam to get their friendship. And for uh, 300 years, 400 years now, up until this very hour, regardless to what you accept and believe in, you accept whatever they offered you for 400 years, and you believe in it, and you love them, and you tell them you love them, and you hate yourself because of this <laughs> deprived knowledge of self by them. To you, you even hate yourself and love them. Therefore, you feel ashamed to say that you like anything other than what they teach you. You feel ashamed to say that you are with your own people. I was talking with a minister one day, and he says to me that I love everybody. He said, I love white folks. I say, yes. I say, there is no people on the earth that actually love their enemies but the foolish so-called American Negro. And that's due to the lack of knowledge. He has no knowledge of himself, nor anyone else. Therefore, he says a lot of things that sometimes he actually lies. He actually lies sometimes in claiming that he loves everybody. He don't love himself so that he figures nobody. And uh, if he said that he loved his slave master, sometimes he lie there. He don't love his slave master, but he's afraid of his slave master because he don't have the knowledge of his slave master, nor does he have the knowledge of himself and his God and the people of God. He knows nothing about it. He knows nothing about the power of God. He knows nothing about uh, anyone but his slave master and his children. And he knows that they do not treat him as an equal human being. He knows that he don't expect justice when he goes into that court. He knows that they are not going to treat him right if they even uh, <coughs> stop him on the highway to pretend that he's speeding if he is speeding. He don't expect justice. He knows that. And especially in the South, where did he turn his back? He's lacking to be shot, even after being falsely accused of speeding. And if he was speeding, he's subject to be shot in the back when that he turns his back on the highway patrol office. This is a land wherein we just don't have no justice and no friend. But this is the land that Abraham said that God revealed the history of the revelation to him concerning his people being lost for 400 years. This particular spot where we are in was not known to the scientists where this place would be. All they had was that they would be lost somewhere on the earth, but guess where it was, they didn't know. At that time of the revelation to Abraham, you must remember that the red infant was in this part of our earth who 
has been brought over here according to uh, the uh, revelation of Allah to me in the person of Master W.D. Farad Muhammad, to whom praises be forever. That uh, <clears throat> they had been in the Western Hemisphere for 16,000 years, driven out of what is known today, the East Indians, uh, who are now uh, country borders, Pakistan, and who was uh, were the masters of that entire country. They are called the East Indians to distinguish them from the West Indians. But the Red Indian here is the brother of those in India today, and if you look at them, you will soon see that they are brothers by their teachers. Oh, uh, all of this is to give to you a knowledge of some. But our fathers were brought here just 400 years ago. But has withstood more evil treatment than any human being ever received at another human being's hand and mouth since that man has been on the face of the earth. You said, no, no, you're wrong. I say, yes, yes, I'm right, and I will <laughs> make you prove that I'm wrong. If you have any history wherein that any other people ever suffered at the head of a human being, or human beings, as white and ruthless, merciless, as we have sat at the hand of white American, I will submit power to you, and I will pay for the wrong and be willing to suffer anything that you may satisfy your desire as being the price that I should pay, even if it's death. We don't have any history uh, that in the last 4,000 years, you uh, mentioned that uh, equals the uh, cruel history that the so-called American Negro has suffered in America. We don't have anything like that. You say, well, the Jews, uh, I even hear the white people say sometimes when uh, this evil treatment they have given to us under slavery for the last 400 years, say it to uh, the brother or sister who is talking to them that we, uh, there was slavery among all people. We all have suffered slavery. And some of our own scholars today, our own color, is now using the same terms as that's uh, very common to see them take up anything that uh, the white man used to throw at us to see whether or not that he can get away with uh, deceiving us in some false uh, statement. But this, the scholars of our people should be ashamed of themselves for taking up the same, uh, same, or the same uh, uh, question, or the same mockery, or, or abuse to us, since they are our brothers, and has suffered the same treatment that we have suffered, if not their fathers have suffered it, why should you take side with the
let you take sides with people who you know all your life has been an enemy of the black man here in America, <laughs> to help him to make mark of your own people, help him to claim that he's justified in saying this or uh, doing this to you and I. This is a uh, very shameful and a wicked thing on the part of the intellectual people of our kind, they are Americans, our scholars and scientists, who are ashamed to confess their harm. They want to be like their slave master's children. Therefore, they deny and reject any glory coming to their own time. But pretty soon, Allah will change this. But pretty soon, Allah will change this particular thinking. I'm assured of that. It is written and prophesied that every one of my people will be resurrected into the knowledge of their own and all will go to their God, go to their people, and go to their own country, and they all will be happy, and they all will live in peace, and they all will praise and glorify the God who delivered them. And one place says here in the Bible that in that day and time they shall not no more say that the God who brought them up out of the land of Egypt lived. But the God who searched and the earth and found them and gathered them together and brought them back to their own country. Not a God who went into Egypt and get the hand for our people, but the God who went up the nation. We find it that he refers to us as a nation. If we uh, don't consider ourselves as a nation today, I say, <laughs> take part in this. There are many people that is called a nation who gets their independence. Some of them uh, don't have over a million and a half population. And some don't have over five million, but they are called a nation. Here we number 20 million. And if 20 million people uh, don't think that they are a nation, I say, when will you recognize yourself as a nation? But you cannot be respected as a nation at the present time because that you are swallowed up in the government of America, and there is no sign of you on the outside because of your name and your way of life that you live trying to imitate the white man. Therefore, it don't look like you even exist to look at you from the outside because you are little Jones, slave boy, and uh, of the Master Jones. And therefore, observing from the outside, no one can tell whether or not that little Jones is white, or uh, big Jones is white, or both is white, or uh, whether there is any black anywhere in America until they come among you. Therefore, uh, going in the name of the white man for 300 and ten years up until I would say the coming of Almighty God Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the Lord be praised forever, had no uh, knowledge of our stream and had no knowledge of the whereabouts. It was sixteen years uh, searching before ever that we were discovered here in America. But we have been found now, and you don't have to be frightened to death, and you don't have to wonder without a name. You have been found, and you're no more turned, lost, or forsaken. You have a God on your side today, as it is written in the book. I mean, because even I will go and search for them. 
I will break them again and I will fight them upon the mountains of Israel. They shall lie down in peace, none shall make them afraid. I will bless them with peace like rivers of water. I will not forsake them. I will visit them. Your Bible teaches you all of this. And the whole Quran refers to you time and again that He will give you life. He will put you on top and plant you in the place where another nation will be removed. And this has been the course of history among men ever since that we had history. Every time that one disobeys Almighty God, that ruler is put down. And once every 25,000 years, we take a new start according to the word of Almighty God. Up until this present day, we use that particular number of years that brought a a change in our history. Every 25 years, 25,000 years, part and me, there came about a total change. Almighty God, Allah said that once upon a time, they wrote history for 35,000 years. We are the writers, he says. We in the dark of people of the earth, who has been here ever since the universe was created, are the one that actually record history of everything that takes place on the planet Earth. And the ones who know what has happened and what will happen, it is our own people. Isn't you better happen to be a member of a people like that? If you can only be made to believe. I'm satisfied that you will be as happy as I am and my followers. If you can believe that this is the truth, and it is the truth, beyond the shadow of a doubt, it's nothing but the truth. We know about the 6,000 years, which means, uh, doesn't uh, mean any more to we now who has been taught uh, 60,000 years, 6 to trillion years. Uh, ago. This 6,000 year old history of the Caucasian race seems like talking about here just yesterday. Because of the long, long, long <laughs> history that we have been taken over and that God Almighty Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad has revealed it to us and have given to me the understanding of this particular history and that I'm now teaching you and others how to understand it and how to understand the histories of the prophets and their saints as recorded in the Bible and Quran. He has given to me this understanding. He has uh, revealed this secret to me. Uh, and it is written that God always reveal his saints or his secret only to prophets are servants in the Jews. I don't represent myself as a prophet because you don't need a prophet today. This is the end of prophets. The time that we are living in today is the end of the prophets. There is no need for a prophet after the coming of God. There is no need for a prophet at the end of the present world time. The prophets was uh, before, and the prophets, uh, they were sent throughout the 6,000 years of the Caucasian history on our planet. And uh, there were three great ones, namely Yakub, the father of the Caucasian race, Moses, and Jesus, Muhammad the last. Muhammad takes up in the resurrection. Muhammad, in the seventh century after Jesus, gave us a picture of what we may expect after 1400 years, or in the 1400 year, uh, years uh, after his death. 
he gave us a rather a larger deal to it. And we have it here in Quran. And this Quran teaches us just what to expect. Today he leads us up to the resurrection of the so-called American Negro. They are the one to be resurrected. So the whole entire darker people of earth is in the time of a resurrection from their own future. Because it's the end of a world that has ruled for the past 6,000 years. These things uh, that I'm saying is very, very important uh, that you hear and very important that you believe, very important that you understand them and lay them to heart. Because, as I first said, without the knowledge of history, we are lost. And therefore, cannot calculate nothing. As a man without the knowledge of mathematics, he cannot be. He is subject to a civilization who understands mathematics. Because it takes math mathematics to build a civilization. The knowledge of mathematics, as it, uh, it, it is found in the universe or universal order thing, being the very root in which the universe is based upon. It is mathematics. It is the very root of the religion of Almighty God, the religion of peace, Islam, mathematics. They are the true religion that we have, and it is compared with the true religion of Islam. Mathematics is true. Islam is true. Therefore, the two goes together. I say, you must know yourself, as God Almighty has revealed it to you. You must give a listening ear to yourself. Here in Chicago, where uh, so much fine wisdom of uh, God and the religion of Islam has been poured into the Chicago uh, original uh, people for the last uh, 25 or 30 years. Now, you are the one that is still slow to respond. It is a shame for Detroit and Chicago to be lagging behind other cities, which is now increasing in conflict throughout the nation, from the Atlantic to the West Coast and from the border of Canada to the Gulf. We find our people today, as Ezekiel described them, and <coughs> understand, of dry bones. Now, are uh, in view for our own purpose. So says Almighty oh God a lot to me. This is something that you will not agree with, but all the God is too deep for you. Too ages, too far back. Seventy-six trillion years since that we had the sun alone in the universe. It used to serve us. So, Astaphorat, Muhammad, to whom all praises is due, for six trillion years before that we had star. And it was sixty-six trillion years ago as we make room, as you see her tonight, from this planet, dividing this planet, which was, which is called Earth in English, and Mubar in the Arab tongue at that time. So all my Allah has taught me. And this is a piece of this arm, right? The scientists agree that it's a uh, part of the earth since they have heard the truth of it. And in every way can show that it is some of this earth. But there is no life on it. 
and there's no water on it. I don't know why the white man thinks that he can go there and build a civilization on it when God himself rejects life going there. I don't know why he's, maybe he's just putting one over to make us laugh, but uh, we know that life cannot exist on the moon. We know that. That's the total knowledge of the moon and how that it is uh, arranged there and what happened to it makes life impossible. And what happened to it makes life impossible to survive on the moon unless you go into Canada, you plant the water from this earth, plenty of this atmosphere to live in. You most certainly will be deprived of atmosphere of this earth, you will most certainly be deprived of water, you will be deprived of vegetation, you can't eat your beefs and your lambs and your chickens, you cannot go out and uh, <coughs> eat vegetables from a garden on the moon. I don't know what you will live on unless you have uh, a market transportation from the earth there on the moon. And you cannot live without living in an oxygen tank. You have to live completely concealed, airtight, in some tank. Because you cannot breathe on the moon. If your face appears on the moon, so says God to me, that your eyes will pop out of your head the very first thing because they have water in them and uh, that is something that is not on the moon and the magnetic power of the moon is so strong, so terrific that you just won't be able to even look at the surface with a naked eye. You will have to keep those naked eyes behind some material that will not allow that outside air there, there, there to enter your live skin. It, it will be death to you. And I don't know, as I say, this is only fiction or only something that uh, the white man is trying to uh, make us laugh off. Uh, I, I'm sure he don't uh, believe that he can go there himself and live. Uh, he may be able to get there, but he won't be able to survive there. So don't buy a lot on the moon. You, you might have to put it up for sale again, and it's too expensive anyway. No one would want it but a man that is in a dream. <laughs> so I say, it is all useless to talk on um, these days. It's useless to talk about going to Venus and living there. Useless to talk about going on laws and living there. It's just foolishness. You can't survive on no planet but the one that you are part of. This atmosphere, this earth, the vegetation, the water here you are from, and you return to it. And you can't survive without it. You, no other planet is the same as this planet. And no other planet is the same as that other planet. They all are different and all are located in different positions from the sun and they all rotate around the sun at right, but they all are <laughs> their distance is different. Therefore you can't survive your life on any other planet other than the Earth. But let me get back before our time is up to the so-called American Negro and drop a few more good words into your good ears that has been stuffed up by falsehood and blindness for yourself that you might not understand even on the coming of God himself at the last day. That God himself would find himself impossible to open your eyes and unstuck that they fail according to the feeling of them by the same master and his children. You are living in the time that you must be separated, not integrated, but the time of separation. Foolish brother, no 
don't get the idea that you are not living in no such time. This is the time. This is the resurrection of the dead. This is the judgment. This is the presence of God. It is not the time he has already come. This is the time and end of the prophets. You read and you search for the knowledge of Scripture and you yourself understand by what you read that this is the end of the prophets. And this, I would say, is true if you will avail yourself of it. We are living in this time, a great time of trouble, of the departure of the two worlds. One is departing from the other, and the other is emerging in the departure uh, place of the other. We will have a new entire uh, government and a new civilization from what you see of the old. We will not take any pattern from the old world uh, that the God feels himself too independent to use a pattern from an old world. We have the civilization of anxious people in the history, but we don't have no knowledge of that civilization of how it worked. We don't have any books, no textbooks from their libraries. All was destroyed with that people. Once every 25,000 years, so says Almighty God, uh, they destroyed a whole history of what went on for the past 25,000 years, and they make a new one. And take a, a, a note of that history and put it away and preserve it from the masses of the people and the knowledge of the common people, and no man is allowed to look in it or read that history, except he is going to be a wonder man uh, to change probably a civilization, a uh, universal change is about to take place, and he will be the one to bring about the change. And that book is given to him to read our study, to know what happened with us on this planet for the past 25,000 years, 50,000 years, or a million or a billion or a trillion years. But the coming of the just one that we now are getting afraid of with, he has the knowledge of the very beginning and knows all of the history of the universe from their creation. And there is no end of his uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Therefore, you and I are lucky to be here in this time to get some of this knowledge that he are now applying to you and I. Though we don't have the book that will take us into that great knowledge into the hereafter because of the presence of this world. But soon after this, well, then we will have a new book that will take us in the beyond. But at the present time, we are finishing up what is written in the present book of our scriptures, namely the Bible in World War. And with this knowledge up to the door of the year after, you and I should understand it so that we will rule our place today and where to stand in the departure of the old world and the emerging of the new world. You are a great nation. You are the members of a mighty nation. You are a, the members according to the teaching of Almighty God uh, of a people that have no beginning. You are a, you are a great people and are strong. But you went to sleep and slept 6,000 years. Now the whole nation of our colony is rousing themselves to take a hold of the rings uh, of civilization and rule once more and again forever. There will never be a departure of the, the structure of the government 
of the people. Are the people, are the black men, no more in the future. And I say to you, at this time, our time is now, is uh, going to close, but it's all the king of Chicago, remember, that you should join on the unkind of the members of the great nation that live in Chicago. Don't be proud because that you have a degree, degree from college and university of this world. Don't be too proud to set you on. All of this passes away as it did in Sodom and Gomorrah and the time on the world before that. They all passed away. They hold to your God. They hold to your own time. Separate yourself from others in your own time. And accept your heart and be happy to fly to your God who is seeking you to set you in power forever on this paradise. I thank you for your country. And I pray a lot that I will be back at the main hour on the main station next Monday to me. And I pray that you will think of all that I have said in this hour and thank the God. And I say unto you, my beloved people, and those who are listening, and the Arab language, which means peace. I salam alaikum.